Hey guys, it's Penguin here and welcome back to another gold making video. In today's video, we are going to be covering everything you need to know about dragonflight blacksmithing. I know a ton of people have been requesting this profession, so to all of those people out there, I hope this video fits your needs and thank you so much for stopping by. As always, we're going to be going over some pros and cons of this profession, what sort of reputation you need, how to level it, and also we're going to be going over basic recipes, and finally, some recommendations to actually spec out your profession. As always, this video is a part of my bigger Dragonflight prep series, so if you are somebody who is looking for more sort of Dragonflight information, looking for another profession, it is potentially already out there. And if I am still missing a profession that you are looking for, it will be coming out the rest of this week. But everybody, thank you so much for stopping by, I hope you enjoy the video, and let's get into it. So, you guys know the drill. Up first, let's talk about some pros to blacksmithing. And thankfully, blacksmithing is very similar to other professions that we've talked about. As always, the most obvious one is that this is a armor profession. What this means is that armor is always in demand. If somebody needs crafted plate armor specifically, or even a weapon, they will likely need to find a blacksmith. So as long as crafted gear is in demand, which it almost always is, that means you have customers and you will likely always get sales. Now, continuing that point further, we have pro number two, which is if you are not a huge fan of armor or weapons, there is a ton of other variety of items that you can start crafting. You know, Dragonflight is making all of the professions a little bit more advanced and complicated, and that means that each profession is getting a little bit more love in terms of recipes. So if you're somebody who doesn't want to craft armor, there are different weapon enhancements, even crafting reagents that are used for inscription glyphs, and so much more. And so wrapping all of that together, the final pro that we have is that a lot of people are going to rely on you with this profession. And of course you have the raiders and all of those people who want to armor and weapons, but also other crafters. A huge thing in Dragonflight is your profession equipment, and blacksmithing is responsible for a ton of different items. So you will have a ton of other crafters coming to you needing those tools, so yet again, a lot more demand. Now transitioning into cons, I really don't have any. The only con that I could think of, which depending on your person, will either think this is a good thing or bad thing, but it does require a lot of crafting orders. As you guys know, this is an armor profession. A lot of the high-end gear is BOP, meaning that you are going to have to rely on crafting orders in the system itself. If you're somebody who is not a fan of the system, you're a little bit scared of it, you don't want to touch it, then of course that is a big downside to this profession. But most people will probably be open to the system, so I honestly don't see this as a con too much, but it just depends on you. And so let's move on to part two, which is going to be reputation requirements, and thankfully this will be pretty short. On screen, I will have a list of all of the recipes, but in terms of major factions, you only need two of them. You will need to farm rep with the centaurs, as well as the Valdraken Accord, so honestly, not that bad. However, a lot of recipes do rely on these two factions, so it is very important that you grind these out. And besides that, the only side faction that you need is the Artisan's Consortium which you'll be grinding anyways for knowledge points if you want to get a lot more advanced, so it's just kind of a side thing that's going to happen anyways, and you'll be able to get those recipes pretty easily. Now one thing to note here, if you guys look at the actual recipes you are unlocking with Renown, you will notice this is a ton of the best in slot profession gear. We're going to talk about this in just a second, so you may recognize the names, but that is something to keep in mind. If you're somebody who is going to want to focus on profession equipment and crafting different tools, you are definitely going to need to farm this rep. And so let's move on to the actual profession gear that blacksmiths need. Now, of course, because this is a primary profession, you can equip two different accessories as well as one tool. Now, blacksmiths are pretty self-sufficient and you can actually craft two of your recommended items. 
Up first, you have the Kazgarite Blacksmith's Toolbox, which comes from blacksmithing, as well as the Black Dragon Touched Hammer. So if you go this route, if you unlock those recipes, you can craft them yourself, or of course, you can order it through the crafting order system. Then the final item that you will need to grab is from Leatherworking, which is the Flame Proof Apron. So as always, you will have to get this through the crafting order system, or you will have to have an alt that has Leatherworking who can craft this item as well. And so with all of those requirements and pros and cons out of the way, let's talk about what blacksmiths are actually going to be doing. And thankfully, compared to Shadowlands, it's actually a little bit simpler on the reagent side. Up first, as a classic staple of all blacksmithing, we have a vendor item, which is the Primal Flux. This is just a simple vendor item that you'll be buying from different vendors. Nothing special about it, you can't get it any other way, and so you will be utilizing these in almost all of your crafts. Moving on, in the ore department, we actually only have three types this round. So I'm going to be comparing these to Shadowlands to just kind of give you guys a comparison, but of course ignore this if you guys aren't very familiar with Shadowlands items. But up first, we have our common ore, very similar to Lacerite ore, and this is your Servite ore. You'll be able to farm this up in bulk. This is kind of your normal item that you'll get if you are gathering and mining, but this is kind of your generic common ore. Up next, you have the equivalent of all of the different green ores and Shadowlands, but this time you only have one, which is the Draconium ore. Once again, pretty easy to get, but a little bit rarer than your common. Then lastly, on the best in slot side, the best ore that you will want to get your hands on is Kazgrite. And you can kind of compare this to Alethium if you are in Shadowlands, but Kazgrite will be the ore that you will ultimately want to get for those high-end crafts, but those are the three ore that you're going to be dealing with inside this profession. Now, besides that, we have different alloys. And this time around, this is a little bit more complicated, but this is kind of the same thing as Shadowgast Ingots, if you guys are familiar with, you know, this current expansion. Up first, we have the Primal Molten Alloy, which is kind of your most basic one. You know, this is used for all of your generic crafts. Up next, without even showing you the recipe, you guys can guess it with the name, we have the Infurious Alloy. What does that name mean? You guys will see, this is for your PvP gear. And so a trend for Dragonflight is that if the item has Infurious in the name, or it requires rousing slash awakened ire slash blood in order to craft, this is your huge red flag that this is for PvP crafting. So if you ever see this alloy used, you know it's a PvP set. Up next, you kind of have a special alloy, which is called Frostfire. Now this is kind of used in a few unique crafts, not a ton, but of course, depending on what you specialize in, you may use this more than others. And so that leaves us with our fourth and final alloy, which is the Obsidian Seared Alloy. And this is kind of your epic quality, highest quality ingot. This will be used in all of your high-end crafts, so definitely get comfortable crafting this, but one thing to note is that you actually have to go to a special region on the map in order to craft this. So definitely something you will likely want to prepare in bulk, so you don't have to spend all of your time traveling back and forth. And alright, we have all of the basic reagents covered, so let's actually talk about what we're going to be crafting. Now up first, as always, we have those reagents that I just spoke about, so feel free to pause if you want to see the crafting recipe, but right here we have that obsidian seared, then we have the frostfire alloy, we have the infurious, there you go, there's that special reagent, the awakened ire, stating that this is, hey, a pvp item, and then lastly we have the most simple primal molten alloy. Now, continuing down this list, you will notice that we, of course, have the basic finishing and some sort of optional reagent. All sort of professions have this in Dragonflight, but feel free to look at that property if you'd like. And then let's get into the armor, which is what everybody really wants to know about. And so to keep this simple, let's start at the bottom and work our way up back at the top. Up first, if you guys have seen my tailoring video, you may recognize some of these names, but this first set, the Explorer set, is our most basic, just leveling, generic gear. 
So you will get this as you level up your profession. It is, you know, wearable at level 61. So people leveling may want to buy this. And overall, it's just a very basic crafting set. Up next, continuing on, we have our Crimson Combatant set. Now, of course, if the name doesn't give it away, you can look at the alloy that it is using to say, hey, this is PvP, and you can confirm that by looking at the tooltip. You can see that it increases the eye level to 398, so of course that is awesome for any PvPers out there. Now, all UIs do this just because of how we unlock these, but this is just a continuation of the Explorer set. And then we have the fun stuff. Up first, let's keep it simple, and we have the Primal Molten set. And this is your generic epic quality gear. So if you look, this was at base eye level 384. There's no sort of set bonus, and this is just your generic epic quality gear. So if somebody is trying to get a full set of this, or trying to fill up some blanks, this might be the set that they want. Now besides that, we also have our special, more unique set that you can only equip so many, and these actually have equipped bonuses. So going back down the list, we have our Unstable Frostfire. Frostfire, one of those unique items that uses one of those special alloys. And this right here, same item level, and you will notice the uniquely equipped, and also it has some sort of equipped bonus. I apologize, I don't know why, but on beta, my tooltips flash. But this item is a little bit more special, and just a quick note, a lot of these special items come from drops. Now, of course, the good thing is, as you guys can notice, this is BOE, as it is purchasable off the auction house, but of course, somebody has to go get that drop in order to unlock this item. Going back to the top, we have the Frostfire Leg Guards, so the pair of the belt, but once again comes from a drop, also has a unique ability. Then, of course, look at that name, look at those reagents, we have our two special PvP gear. Right here, equipping it will increase that item level to 424. In arenas and battlegrounds, you also have some sort of bonus. You can look at the War Boots too, and then lastly, we have our final sort of allied pair as well. Once again, this comes from Boss Drops, and you guys can look to see if this is an item you may want. But overall, to kind of sum that up, you have your basic leveling set, you have a standard PvP set, you have a generic epic quality set, and then you have your more specialized pieces of gear that people may want to prioritize. Continuing on, because this is blacksmithing, we have a ton of weapons and shields, and the same thing applies. We have our generic kind of blue version, then we have our primal molten generic epic version, and then lastly we have our actual special version, once again uniquely equipped, and also has some sort of equipping bonus. Up next, we have our full list of weapons, and I am a broken record, the same thing applies. We have our basic set, which is the draconium pieces, then we have our two sets of just generic epic weapons. So we have our primal molten stash, which once again is just kind of your generic pieces, there's no sort of equipping bonus or anything like that, and then you have the same thing for obsidian seared. I'm not going to run my mouse over everyone because that will take a while, but feel free to pause if you want to read any sort of tooltips or anything like that. Now, if you guys are looking at the item level differences, don't be afraid about that. Keep in mind, you know, I can only craft these obsidian gear pieces or seared pieces, sorry, at quality two, and then I could craft these at three. So that's why it's showing a higher item level, but they share the exact same. Moving on, we have our profession tools, which is very exciting, especially if this is the market you really want to prioritize. Blacksmithing pieces are used in a ton of different professions, so they will help a lot of people out. As always, we have our simple BOE version, so you can throw these on the auction house, get some quick sales, and then you have your higher quality versions, which you can complete through the crafting order system and make some gold through commissions. But you know, here is that best in slot for us, as well as our toolbox, but then we have plenty of others for skinners, you know, herbalists, miners, jewel crafters, leather workers, and so much more. And so this is where we get into kind of the more unique and interesting items, I would say. Up first, starting with the, I guess, least interesting after that intro, we have our basic skeleton key. 
These are not new, these are just the lock picking keys that you can utilize if you don't have a rogue and open up all of those awesome loot boxes. Next up, we have a cool new item. This is kind of a replacement of auto hammer in a way. And this item will allow you to fully repair a weapon or a piece of plate armor. Keep in mind, it's consumed on use, so it's a one-time use. You also need to have blacksmithing learned, but this could be very interesting. So if you're somebody who repairs items a lot, you are in sticky situations, this may be an item for you. Next up, we have a sturdy expedition shovel. I'm not going to cover this much. It's kind of related to the factions and different activities you can do, but you can dig up for treasure if you want. Then the kind of exciting new item of blacksmithing is the master's hammer. Now I'm about to talk about this item, but I do want you to remember that there is a huge caveat to this item, which I will discuss kind of once we start talking about specialization builds. So I'm about to say this item is awesome, but just remember there's a big caveat. But what this is, is basically an upgraded version of that other repair hammer. However, it is not breakable. So you can use this as many times as you want. It's BOP and you do need blacksmithing at level 25, but you can repair any weapon or piece of plate armor as long as you are specialized. Once again, we'll talk about that in just a second. Going into the stoneworks, like I mentioned during the pro section, you guys have your weapon enhancements. Very similar to past expansions, this will increase your attack power of your blunt weapon, this will increase the attack power of a sharpened weapon, and then you also have this new razor stone, which is really cool because this actually increases finesse for your gathering abilities. So if you are a gatherer out there, you're going to buy a ton of these, just like a Mythic Plus player would buy the waystones. So something to keep in mind, once again, another market and more professions relying on you. Finishing it off with the fun stuff, we have Alvin the Anvil. Who doesn't want an anvil following you around? You know, it might get heavy, but come on, he is a little bit cute. And then also we have some interesting inscription needed items. If you guys watch my inscription video, you guys know that inscriptionist or scribes can actually craft dragon writing glyphs or dragon writing appearances for your drakes. And these are one of the much needed items in order to actually produce these. So if you have a scribe, you will be needing these items or to all the scribes out there, we'll be needing these items. So that's some more market and money for you. A downside is that even though they're technically not BOP, they have to be acquired through the crafting order system. So it's a little bit funky, but once again, it will help you out a ton in making some extra gold and all of the scribes will thank you a ton. And so moving on to leveling, thankfully blacksmithing is pretty easy. In terms of how far you can get into this profession with just trainer learned recipes, you'll be able to reach about 60. Technically, if you really wanted to or needed to, you can push this to 65. However, the items you have available are in the green, which means they have a low chance of gaining skill, which means it could get quite expensive, but you can hit 60 very easily. And the reason why I say this is so easy is because if you look at the picture on screen, you will notice that it only requires three different reagents, which is of course that vendor item that we talked about earlier and the two easier types of ore. So I'm not going to say this is going to be insanely cheap, it just depends on material cost, but at least you're not keeping track of five to ten different reagents just trying to level up your profession. Also, with the various types of items you'll be able to craft and have access to, you'll be able to get about 18 knowledge points by just following this path, which is super, super awesome and will be very, very helpful with those recommended builds. And speaking of which, let's go jump into recommended builds right now. Now, with all of that out of the way, you guys have a good handle on blacksmithing. Let's talk about the recommended builds that I have for this profession. Now, a huge disclaimer before we get started is that there are a few tricky things with knowledge points. A huge one is that once you use points, they are permanent. As you guys notice, I have points in weapon smithing, and in an ideal world, I would not want this, but I put points into this, you know, a few days ago, and because they're permanent, I can't get rid of them. So, once again, if you make a choice, if you put points into something, that is a permanent choice. 
Now on the other end of that is that it is okay if you make a mistake because you can unlock everything. You'll notice that I have all trees unlocked. I don't have a ton of points put in, but I can unlock absolutely everything. So it may be a long process. It is going to be a long process, but if you accidentally, you know, misplace a spec point or something like that, it will not hurt you in the long run. So you're okay. And so keeping it simple, build number one is the armor smith or the armorer who wants to craft all of the armor and gear pieces they can. Now a huge caveat I will say right here is that we do not have the best in slot list, theory crafted list, we don't have any information about what people are going to be demanding. So I can't sit here and say, hey, chest pieces are going to be best in slot, you should prioritize that, but that information will be coming. But thankfully, I can say that whatever slot you end up picking, the process is the same for every single one. So, you know, you don't have to get funky with different points or anything. It all follows the same exact process. So what you will have to do for this demonstration, let's just say we're trying to prioritize helmets, we will have to put our first 10 points, just like this, into our first specialization. This will allow us to pick our first sub-spec. Because we're going for helmets, we will pick the middle one, but feel free to pick whichever you like. Once you do that, you will have to put in a few more points, about 10, and then you can finally choose your final one. Right here you have helmets, shoulders, as well as boots. Like I mentioned, we are going helmets in a boom right there. Our first 20 points, so remember we get about 18 when leveling, we almost have enough just from leveling to unlock one piece of gear. Now, the system as you unlock an item is the same. Once you unlock this node, you're going to gain the recipe, which is always the most important part. As you continue to put points into the system, you're going to gain extra skill and so on, and then you'll be able to use finishing reagents on these items as well, once again to increase your overall skill. You keep going, and here is that huge caveat that I told you to remember about the hammer. In order to actually use that master's hammer and to actually repair your item for free forever, you have to spec into it, which means that's going to cost you 30 points to unlock right here. That means, you know, it took us 20 points to get to the section and then 30 to max out. That is a 50 point commitment, which is pretty expensive. Of course, we're upgrading our helmets on the way, but once again, that is a huge caveat of that special item. But that is kind of how this works. You know, if you want to unlock, let's say, boots, for example, you will have to put in 10 more points to unlock another sub-spec, and then you can learn boots. Same thing goes, you know, you're going to unlock the recipe, gain a bunch of skill, be able to use finishing reagents, and then lastly, you will gain the ability to repair this type of armor. Let's say I wanted to expand to a new category, I will have to put more points into the overall tree in order to unlock another category, and then the same thing applies. Gotta put in more points, which of course will grant me a new section. So as you can see, this system just builds on top of each other, but it follows the same sort of thing. One thing to note, if you do end up maxing out this first node, you're going to gain the ability to craft armor 15% faster, as well as get an inspiration and resourcefulness boost, which can be useful. Now before we move on to build number two, I do want to remind you that if you level up your profession, you're going to be past level 50. Once you are past level 50, you will be able to unlock two different trees. So keep in mind, you could put some points into armor smithing and then put some points into weapon smithing, but I will take note of hammer control. If you just learn this tree, you don't have to utilize any points, you will gain a 15% speed boost. So if you're somebody who plans on sinking all of your points into armor, then just unlock this tree, it costs no points, and you'll gain a nice little speed build. But just something to keep in mind. Going on to build number two, as you guys can probably imagine, we have weaponsmithing. Now thankfully weaponsmithing works honestly the same as armor, so it is pretty simple. Up first, you're going to have to put 10 points into here to pick a sub-spec, which, you know, past Penguin has already done, and I ultimately ended up picking blades. From here, you have two options. You have short blades as well as long blades. 
If you go to this side, you have axes, pickaxes, and pole arms, as well as maces and hammer. But if we wanted to continue on, we would have to put in some points right here, and then we can unlock one of these. Let's say we go with long blades, and once again, the same sort of system applies. We will at first learn one singular recipe, in this case we learned the long sword, and then we will also learn another one, in this case the warglaive. We will gain overall skill, unlock finishing reagents, and right there again, we'll be able to actually use the hammer and freely repair these. So same system applies, you actually have to max out this tree in order to unlock that ability. Short Blades gains access to the Short Blade as well as the Spell Blade, and if we follow this side over here, you will unlock the Great Axe, the Kazgarite Pickaxe, which is a profession tool, and then of course you'll be able to unlock those as well as normal. For Maces, you'll gain the Mace, very surprisingly, and then you'll also gain the Blacksmith Hammer. So if you are somebody prioritizing profession tools, this will be the build for you. But there's not really much to say about weaponsmithing, that's about it, and we're going to move on to our last build. And so before I get into our last build, I do want to mention hammer control. Now this tree is your most generic tree that just focuses on your overall quality of your crafts. So none of this is kind of, you know, utilized in any sort of build, this is just kind of where you can throw in extra points once you get them. Also, of course, you can unlock the tree for some basic, you know, speed boost if you don't plan on unlocking any others at the current moment. But what this tree does is you will gain overall skill, and then if you go this side, you'll gain overall inspiration, and then lastly, you'll gain overall resourcefulness. So if you want to kind of boost those, you can put points into this tree, but I'm not really utilizing these in any sort of build. And so that takes us to the final build, which is kind of our consumables and intermediate crafting build, which all falls under the specialty smithing tree. So as always, we will have to put in a few points into this top node, only five this time, and then you have three options. Up first, the one that you don't want to pick for this build is tool smithing, which is going to deal with profession tools and accessories. So if you are somebody, I don't have a build for it, but if you're somebody who is prioritizing, let's say, you know, pickaxes and hammers and stuff like that, this might be the tree for you, as you'll be able to gain a lot of resourcefulness and inspiration for these types of items. But in our case, we're going to be focusing on stonework as well as smelting. Now, which one you pick first is completely up to you, but let's say we pick stone first. What this will do is improve your crafting of your stone goods, which are those waystones and razor stones that we looked right here. So these are your, you know, weapon enhancements, so you are going to be mass crafting these, and this will help you out. You'll gain a ton of multi-craft inspiration, and yet again, more multi-craft to improve your overall crafting of these items. Of course, keep in mind, in order to fully max that out, it's going to cost us 20 points. Putting in 10 more points into this system will be able to unlock smelting, or vice versa if you chose the opposite, and this will improve the smelting of your alloys, so all of those things we talked about before. Basically, you'll just gain a ton of multicraft and inspiration, same sort of deal, so if you're trying to lower that crafting cost, this could be very beneficial. Also, it does require 20 points, so in order to kind of max both of these out, right here, that is 55 points. Now, if you do decide to continue putting points into this tree, you're going to gain some more additional inspiration. You're going to gain a plus 20% speed buff, which is awesome, to these items you're crafting, resourcefulness, and also, you know, you can unlock this final tree if you'd like. But that's kind of it for all of these builds. Remember, you can unlock two trees at level 50, so feel free to mix and match to whatever your needs are. But that is what we have for today's video. To everybody who is looking forward to blacksmithing, I hope this answered your questions, and if you have any more outstanding questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below, and I'll try to always answer as fast as possible. But everybody, thank you so much for watching, and have a good day.